All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Yahweh. Excuse me. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Bahashem, meaning in the name Yahweh Shai. This is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners scattered abroad. That may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but our Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles, a great millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the hope of the elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out in Des Moines, Iowa, coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Harbor Kakwadash. And um, this lesson was inspired by um, the elder bro Rive um, out in, the, in Nebraska. He did a lesson entitled, uh, uh, do you care? And he was posing the question to ask ourselves if we uh, if we really care, right? In regards to the work of the Lord, serving Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, this ministry and things of that nature. And um, he went into the definition of the word care in the Adamon online and it said to, uh, to give serious uh, mental attention to something, all right? To give serious mental attention to something, right? And, um, I want to go into this precept, just having that definition in mind. All right, this is the book of Matthew chapter 13 and verse 12. It says, he that receives seed among thorns. Now the seed, when you read, um, I believe it's in this chapter and also in the book of Luke, it says the seed is the word. All right, so it says, he also that receives seed or received the word among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful so in this parable it talks about a man who received this word but he becomes unfruitful why is that because the cares of the world choke him all right his mind is on other things all right he stops caring about the work of Yahweh okay his mental attention is taken away from the work of Yahweh and his mental attention is put towards the cares of this life, all right? Whether it's satisfying the lust of the flesh, whether it's this, your woman, that, whatever the case may be, his care, his mental attention is put towards something else. And this is what we have to be mindful of, man. All right, the scripture says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay, so whatever you value the most is gonna show forth and where your mind is at. And if your mind is in other places outside of this ministry continually, you're gonna become unfruitful, man. Okay, if you're going weeks without doing lessons, you have to question yourself on is my care really towards this ministry? Because obviously your care is put somewhere. All right. People talk about, oh, I don't care about nothing. I don't know. Your, your mind is towards something. All right. Even people that that's in this world and they act like, you know, I don't give a shit about nothing and this and that and the third. No, they care about something. All right. Whether it's care about fulfilling their lust, doing whatever they want just selfish okay so pretty much it's like you you know to get to the point the point that i'm making is that your care is put towards something man your mental attention is put towards something right it says in the book of romans the sixth chapter it says uh to whom you yield your serve your to whom you yield your members to that's to whom uh servants ye are roughly paraphrasing romans the sixth chapter bible was shot going read it so you can get the full impact of the uh the scripture you know but whatever you're you're yielding yourself over to your time and energy all right resources and so on and so forth that shows forth all right what you truly care about all right that shows forth where your mental attention is towards man that shows forth what you value man all right now the scriptures tell us that this wisdom is more valuable than anything man this talks about the depth of the riches of the knowledge of Yahweh all right that's the true value that's the true riches right now, if we say that we believe that, all right, that this is the most valuable thing on the planet, but <laughs> we're putting our interest and time and effort into everything else outside of that, then we have to question if we are lying to ourselves, man. If we really live in that, man. All right, the scriptures talk about being a hypocrite. It says the hypocrite shall not come before the Lord, man. All right. In the book of Job, it says that, man, the hypocrite shall not come before the, uh, the Heavenly Father, roughly paraphrasing, man. Now, when you look up the word hypocrite, also in the Edamon online, like when you read down, it's like the word.net, when you actually look it up, all right, on that page, 
but it says a hypocrite is one who professes beliefs and values which he doesn't uphold. So we can't be a hypocrite, man. We have to show forth to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that nah, this is the true treasure. This is what I believe in. And we show that through what we're willing to sacrifice. If we're willing to sacrifice our time to read and study, if we're willing to sacrifice time to put together these lessons, all right? And not for eye service, not for men pleasing, but because we truly value this, all right? Because we truly fear the Lord. Hey, call out like Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. I'm in transit and I'll see you on the. Uh, Somebody on their uh, vehicle, they have a phone number and it's 515 and then it says 441. All right, that was just spiritual, hey. But, um, but nevertheless, man, hey, we, have to, uh, we have to be mindful of these things, man, because Satan is going to try and choke you out, all right? If he sees you locked in and focused, he's going to throw in different things and see, well, let me see if I can get his attention. All right, he's put too much work and energy towards the Lord. Let me see if I can get his attention to something else. Now, even within the responsibilities that we have, all right, the scripture says, whoso uh, followed the Lord has to carry his cross and follow Yahweh Shai. So your cross can be your afflictions, all right, the hell that you got to catch. Hey, your cross can be your responsibilities, man, that you have to take care of. But what does the scripture says? We have to carry our cross, meaning deal with those afflictions, deal with those hardships, deal with those other burdens, and do what? And still follow the Lord. Okay, so we have to we have to learn how to balance things out, man. We have to learn how to balance things out to where we are showing forth that we truly love the Lord, that we care about this ministry, that we care about the sacrifice that the Lord Yahweh Shai gave, so that we can even be a part of this ministry and have mercy. We have to balance out showing the Lord that and taking care of everything else, man. Everything else is ultimately on the back burner to this ministry, man. All right. The scriptures talk about um, seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High, and all these things shall be added unto you. So at the end of the day, whatever it is, all right, that we want, that we desire, all right, or whatever it is that could be taking your attention, at the end of the day, the Lord is going to add those things unto you anyways if you put Him first. So we have to go out based on we have to uh, take a step of faith, a leap of faith, be like you know what, I'm gonna focus on the ministry, ministry. I'm gonna focus on serving Yah, Bashim Yah all right. And I'm going to believe that he'll give me these other things anyways, man. I'm going to believe that everything else will fall into place. So we have to still take care of certain responsibilities, but it's up to us to be men to balance those things out, man. We have to time manage, man. That's a part of the ministry is managing our time, prioritizing our time to read and to study, all right, to do lessons, okay? That, that comes with self-motivation and self-effort to do that, man. The scriptures talk about in the book of Psalms, the 32nd chapter, it talks about not being like the horse that has to be led, all right, with a bridle, with a bit in his mouth. Now, when you look at the horses, all right, you have uh, horse trainers, all right, and they have the uh, the bit, the bridle in the horse's mouth. Now, that bit, it's used to control the horse. So, the, uh, the person that's riding the horse, he can't always just be like, all right, let's go to the right. Like it's times where it's like, all right, let's. I gotta pull this nigga to get him to go in, in in the direction that he's supposed to go into, that I'm directing him in. The scriptures tell us to not be like that. We shouldn't have to be pulled to do lessons. We shouldn't have to be pulled to make sacrifices for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Now we should be doing these things willingly, and we have plenty of motivation, man. All right, the Lord gives us plenty of motivation to serve Him. All right. What we have first and foremost to fear the Lord, knowing that if we don't do these things, at the end of the day, excuse my French, but the Lord is gonna fuck us up, man. Okay, that's to be plain. It says, He that knoweth his servants will, or so like it, he that knoweth his master's will and doeth it not to, uh, he shall be beaten with many stripes. Roughly paraphrasing, man. So if we know what we're supposed to be doing, and we aren't doing those things, and we continue in that pattern of not doing what the Lord has commanded us to do, it gets to a point to where the Lord casts us off. And then we pretty much will end up just waiting to be destroyed, to get our ass kicked with many stripes. So that fear and being rejected by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai should be a motivating factor. Another motivating factor is the kingdom. So not only knowing that if we don't do these things, like Paul said, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. So Paul looked at us and was like, look, I ain't got no choice anyways, because if I don't do these things, I'm going to be destroyed. 
But on top of that, we have the hope of the reward to come, knowing that if we're doing these things, we'll still be rewarded. The kingdom to come, all right? The blessings to come have a rulership and dominion, all right? That's the motivating factor, man, to push us, to drive us to do this work. And we have to be able to recognize these things and reason in ourselves to motivate us to, to get our, hey, to, to, to put, push forth the work, man. So what we got the fear of the Lord, all right? We got the reward of the kingdom, the blessings to come, which you can go on and on on all these topics, but I'm just summarizing different points that's in my head to motivate, right? And then also just being appreciative of the, of what the Lord, the sacrifice that he gave, man. Okay. What he went through so that we could have this knowledge, what he went through so that we could obtain mercy, man. Those are motivating factors, man, knowing the weakness that we've done and that, and that, uh, the Lord is showing us mercy. Just wanting to show that gratitude, man, that appreciation. All right. We have the example of the, uh, the woman. All right, who came into Simon's house and she washed the Lord's feet with her tears and her hair, right? All right, she was she was very repentful for the sins that she committed, and because of that, that drove her to serve the Lord with that type of a uh, tenacity, for lack of a better word, man. All right, when you read about Paul, all right, he looked at himself as the chief sinner. Okay, he was persecuting the church, so therefore he labored more abundantly. All right, then all the apostles knowing that what he was worthy of, man, knowing that the sins that he committed, man. So all these things were motivating factors. All right, to uh, to uh, uh, to get different individuals to to serve the Lord, man. Okay. But you know, I know that kind of tied into an, uh, another point, another angle. But going back to the original point, man. Hey. Uh, we should, um, our heart has to be on this ministry, man. We have to care about the Lord. And if, if we truly care to be shown forth in our actions, where we're putting our time and discipline and so on and so forth and all those things, man, you know, so I'm going to end it right there through the Holy Spirit, man. Lord's what I was edifying. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.